O oh my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all pervading personality of God. O oh, all pervading personality of God. Uh, for my respectful base, it's unto you. How from my respectful obeisance is unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no act of cause. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. It's she only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahma. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire and land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universe. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravutra. Dharma Projita Kaitravutra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Muranam. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Muranam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shumar Bhagavate Mahamuni Kim Va Parir Ishwara Kim Va Parir Ishwara Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth This Bhagavata Purana propounds the high truth Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in the heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from, uh, from the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such a truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other Scripture. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kaputuro galitam falam. Nigama kaputuro galitam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasam. Oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. Oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire to the Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls, including liberated souls. Shinvatam swak 
Sakata Krishna Shambantam Sakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidiantak Stohi Abhadrani Hidiantak Stohi Abhadrani Vidunati Suhitsatam Vidunati Surinsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures to hear about Krishna from Vedic literature, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, and for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's acts heart, acts as the best wishing friend, acts as the best wishing friend, and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him, and it purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta Preshu Bhadreshu Nasta Preshu Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki in, in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his trans dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more and from the devotees, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava, Tadarajas tamo bhava, Kamaloba dayas chaye, Kamaloba dayas chaye, Chaita etare na vidam, Chaita etare na vidam, Stitvam satve prasidati, Stitvam satve prasidati. By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangha se jayate. Mukta sangha se jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady. The, the candidate remains steady in, in his position of pure goodness. In his position of pure goodness. And becomes enlivened in devotional service. And becomes enlivened in devotion service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sacha karmani. Chidyante sacha karmani. Drishta evatmani shwari. Drishta evatmani shwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagran. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagran. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16. Verse number 31. Atmanam chanaso chami Bhavantam chamarotamam Devam pitrin rishin sadhum Sarvam varam tatasraman Translation. I am thinking about myself and also, O best amongst the de demigods, about you, as well as about all the demigods, sages, denizens of Pitraloka, devotees of the Lord, and all men obedient to the system of Varna and Ashrama in human society. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. To effect the perfection of human life, there is cooperation between men and demigods. Sages, denizens of the Pitraloka, devotees of the Lord, and the scientific system of Varna and Ashrama orders of life. The distinction between human life and animal life therefore begins at the scientific system of Varna Ashrama, guided by the experience of the sages 
in relation with the demigods, gradually rising to the summit of reestablishing our eternal relation with the Supreme Absolute Truth. The personality, uh, the, Supreme, the Supreme Absolute Truth, the personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. When God made Varnashrama Dharma, which is strictly meant for developing animal consciousness into human consciousness, and human consciousness into godly consciousness, is broken by advancement of foolish, of, of uh, advancement of foolishness, the whole system of peaceful and progressive life is at once disturbed. In the age of Kali, the first attack of the venomous snake strikes against the God-made Varnashram Dharma. And thus, a person properly qualified as a Brahmana is called a Sudra. And a Sudra, by qualification, is passing as a Brahmana, all on a false birthright claim. To become a Brahmana by birthright claim is not at all bona fide, although it may be a fulfillment of one's conditions. But the real qualification of a Brahmana is to control the mind and the senses and to cultivate tolerance, simplicity, cleanliness, knowledge, truthfulness, devotion, and faith in the Vedic system, the wisdom. In the present age, consideration of the necessary qualification is being neglected and the false birthright claim is being supported even by a popular, sophisticated poet, the author of Ram Charitamanas. This is all due to the influence of the age of Kali. Thus, Mother Earth, represented as a cow, was lamenting, lamenting the regrettable condition. Well, the author of Ram Charitamanas is Tulsidas. <laughs> and the Ram Charitamanas is his own personal realization and feelings about Lord Ramachandra. The actual bona fide history of Lord Rama is the Valmiki Ramayana. Now, if you read the Ramcharitmanas, it is very poetic. It's chanted by North Indians all the time. And, but in spite of that, there are certain mistakes in it. So it's not Amala Purana, like Srimad Bhagavatam, or uh, Bhagavad Gita. So there are a few mistakes. Uh, one of them is his absolute assistance that you must accept the birthright Brahmana. That's one. Number two, he says, just like you beat a drum, you should also beat your wife. This has become very popular in India men beating their wives. Is this right? <laughs> huh? Is it? Is it right? <laughs> no? <laughs> well, that's bad. <laughs> it's not worse, but that's bad also. No, one, one to, we're talking about physically beating, not mentally, <laughs> not, not, not whiplashing with the tongue, but we're physically beating. No, there's, there's a lot of men beating their wives. I mean, the, the, some of those men, even in, in, in the United States, beat their wives or beat them up. And this is a mistake. Right? Krishna doesn't say things like that. <clears throat> However, a lot of the Ramayana is very poetic and, very, and some very nice feelings are expressed by... Uh, Tulsi does, but we should not consider it as Amala Purana, it's a perfect scripture. There are mistakes in it. We should be concerned with Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. If we understand Bhagavad Gita and then further Srimad Bhagavatam, you'll have all knowledge. If you understand Ramcharit Manas, you'll have some flights of poetic beauty. And then you come across these uh, egregious statements that he makes that uh, are not acceptable. Okay. 
Uh, by the way, did Lord Rama ever beat his wife? <laughs> no. Did Krishna ever beat any of his wives up? And he had a lot of wives. He had to put up with a lot of, of uh, lips, uh, lip service. But no, he never, they never did that. So therefore, that's the f example we should follow. Uh, not only wife, but also children and cows and elderly persons and brahmanas. So if we come back to this Ranasram Dharma, it's very, very important. In fact, I've written a whole booklet about it. Prabhupada has given so much information about the Varnasram Dharma. But he also says it's not possible to follow the original system. Um, however, one can follow what's called Daiva Varnasram in modern times. So what is the difference between the original Varnasram Dharma and Daiva Varnasram. Well, if you read the pastime of uh, Govardhan Puja, you'll understand. Govardhan Puja is an example of Daiva Varnasram. And an, an Iskan temple is an example of Daiva Varnasram also. That is, that it's, Daiva means spiritual, so it's spiritual or God-centered varnashram. That is, all the varnas and all the ashramas are centered around devotional service to Lord Krishna. Does that mean that the original varnashram system is not centered around Lord Vishnu? No, it is. But not to the extent of Daiva Varnashram. Uh, because what's uh, promised in the varnish, uh, traditional Varnashram system is people who are very addicted to sense gratification, they can get it by performance of yagyas. Whereas in the Daiva Varnashram system uh, is uh, not emphasizing those material benefits, but it emphasizes the spiritual benefits you get, such as Harinam Sankirtan, such as ecstatic uh, chanting and dancing, ecstatic prasadam, ecstatic festivals, ecstatic hearing and chanting of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So it emphasizes, Daiva Varnasam emphasizes the, the Ananda Maya Bhyasat. Uh, emphasizing the natural tendency of the soul when it's no longer uh, over, uh, oppressed by the modes of material nature and all kinds of material desires. Uh, one feels natural ecstasy glorifying the Lord. So that's the major difference. Uh, now, whole idea of regulated activity in society, people following rules and regulations, is to help people gradually navigate from being in the modes of ignorance and passion and coming to goodness and eventually from goodness going to transcendental goodness. But this can happen very quickly in the Daiva Varnashram system and it happens very slowly in the Varnashram system. So very quickly, a person can come to the temple even for the first time, and if there's an ecstatic kirtan going on, they can feel the happiness of uh, chanting the holy name of the Lord. So that's one thing that the devotees have to realize, that if you're not happy, you cannot preach. You will be a failure. You will not be able to convince one person because you haven't convinced yourself to be Krishna conscious. So you can't, you, you won't be a preacher. You won't even want to preach. You'll avoid any opportunity to come on Sankirtan. You'll avoid opportunities of preaching even in the temple because you yourself are not happy. That means, uh, just like one time, Prabhupada was giving a lecture. Uh, this was in uh, New Mayapur in France. 
And it was outside. It was a nice summer day. Many, many devotees were there. And he was explaining, Manmanabhava mad bhakto madhya jimam namaskru mam ivaisa si satyam te prati jane priyosime. Krishna says, always think of me. Become my devotee. Worship me. Offer your homage and respect to me. If you do this, I promise you that you will come back to me. And uh, so Prabhupada said, yes, if you do this, you will be happy. And he saw one person that was like, had a like, sad face. And he says, are you happy? And the devotee said, no, I'm not. He said, Man manabhava mad bhakto mad yaji mam namaskar mam ivaisi si satyanti prati jani priyasvi. If you do this, you will be happy. And he said, Well, I'm not, I'm not happy. He said, Man manabhava mad bhakto mad yaji mam namaskar. He repeated it several times. He said, If you are not happy, then there is some fault. There's a discrepancy in your practice of Krishna consciousness. That's why you're not happy. And that's a fact. When we don't follow all the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness, especially chanting 16 good rounds a day and, and even more, then we, we're not happy. We have a, a dour face, as they say in English. And uh, we, we always see the cup as half empty and not half full. We always see the negative side. In fact, just like a fly, bzzz, it goes right on the stool, right? It doesn't go onto the neck, it goes on the stool, right? So the mind of a person who's not happy will always go to the stool and find something to criticize and so forth. So the Svarnasram system, especially Daiva Varnasram system, is based on Anandamaya Bhyasad, that the real nature of the soul is to be happy and to be ecstatic in love for Krishna. And if you actually engage in all those things and follow, especially those who are initiated, follow the vows of initiation, which is follow the regulatory principles and chant 16 good rounds a day, you will be happy. It's by not following those rules and regulations that people become unhappy, even though they're chanting. But see, there's a quality of chanting. That's the whole point. The quality of chanting. Just like in life, there's the quality of a car or a quality of a, of a, 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 a preparation or a quality of a uh, rug or a quality of clothing or quality. You know, everyone's looking for the quality. And when there's quali quality chanting, uh, just like it's explained in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 1826, it says that one must have a feeling uh, when they chant. 1836, where is it? 1836. Yes, so. Is it 36? Shinvanti Gayanti Grinanti Abhikshanasa Smaranti Nandanti Tavehitam Jana. So this says, O Krishna, those who continuously hear, chant, and repeat your transcendental activities or take pleasure in others doing so certainly see your lotus feet, which alone can stop the repetition of birth and death. So let me just make sure this is the right verse. One eight twenty six. Ah, see, I made a mistake. Yeah. So in, in one eight twenty six, that other verse is good too. But one eight twenty six, it says. <clears throat> It 
says, hmm, let me read this purport because it's full of nectar. <laughs> yeah. It says, but there is a quality to such utterances. Actually, he says, there is not the least exaggeration in the statement. Actually, the Lord's holy name has such powerful potency. But there is a quality to such utterances also. It depends on the quality of feeling. A helpless man can feelingly utter the holy name of the Lord, whereas a man who utters the same holy name in great material satisfaction cannot be so sincere. A materially puffed up person may utter the holy name of the Lord occasionally, but he is incapable of uttering the name in quality. Therefore, the four principles of material advancement, namely high parentage, good wealth, high education, and attractive beauty are, so to speak, disqualifications for progress on the path of spiritual advancement. The material covering of the pure spirit soul is an external feature as much as fever is an external feature of the unhealthy body. The general process is to decrease the degree of the fever and not to aggravate it by maltreatment. Sometimes it is seen that spiritually advanced persons become materially impoverished. This is no discouragement. On the other hand, such impoverishment is a good sign as much as the falling of temperature is a good sign. When a person has a uh, 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 high temperature, it's a good sign when it goes lower. The principle of life should be to decrease the degree of material intoxication, which leads one to be more and more illusioned about the aim of life. Grossly illusioned persons are quite unfit for entrance into the kingdom of God. Well, even in the Bible, there's the story of the very rich man who approaches Jesus and he said, my Lord, how can I enter into the kingdom of God? And Jesus looks at him with a little bit of a sad uh, demeanor and says, you'll have to go home and give away all your wealth. And that's such a shock to the rich man that he turns around and walks away very sadly knowing that he cannot do that story in the Bible. So, uh, this is not, uh, I'm not trying to tell you right now, go home right now, take all your money and just throw it away. No, that's not what I'm telling you to do. But, if you have extra money, you should use it in service of Krishna. Right? Now, everybody has a little extra money, and you should use it in service of Krishna, because What's the use of uh, hoarding something? It just creates uh, anxiety because you're always worried about it. There was once a man uh, who didn't trust his wife and his kids and didn't trust banks and government and politicians. So he was doing very well uh, financially, but uh, he would take all his extra money instead of putting it in a bank, he would hide it in a place in the forest. And he, he, he had dug this hole next to this particular tree that he could recognize all the time. And every once in a while, he'd go out there and put some more money in it. And he, de he had a little ceremony, like he'd go and, first of all, he'd put his hands on top of the earth under which the, the money, money box was, and he'd go, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. He sounded something like an owl, you know. Ooh, 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 ooh. Right? So, <laughs> so in the forest, there are always thieves. So, one night he came, and he was going, ooh, 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 ooh. and a thief heard it. He thought maybe it's an owl, but he said, maybe it's, but it didn't exactly sound like an owl. So. He was trying to see in the dark what it was, and he tried to approach, but very quietly, and, and he could finally see the, the man that was there, and he, he was going like, ooh, 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 ooh. And he's wondering, what's going on? It's a very strange thing, you know? And then he saw 
the guy, you know, digging. He had some kind of a s little shovel, and he was digging. And then he saw he took some uh, coins and money and jewelry and opened the box, put it in the box, put it back, covered it with the earth, got some leaves and things, put it over it, and went again. And then he left. So the thief said, wow, this, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like that. So he went and dug up the box. <laughs> it was full of uh, jewels and money, and it was unbelievable. You know, and he said, I can't believe this. This is, this is God's mercy. <laughs> he started to believe in God at that point. So he took all the money and replaced it with a rusty iron bar, you know, some rusty junk. So... But the, he decided he would stick around and see what happens. So one month later, the man came back again, and, and he came and he did his little uh, ritual. He went, ooh, 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 like that. So the thief was watching, you know. And then he uh, dug the box up and opened it up. And when he looked into it, he saw this rubbish. And he started screaming, you know, ah, like that. He went hysterical. And he's digging around and looking around and looking at the box and turned the box upside down and right side up. And he was going insane, you know, and, and he's crying out really loud. So the thief came out. He said, sir, sir, I was, I was in the forest walking through here and I, I heard you crying out. What's the matter? He said, who, 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 the, the box, it's empty. He said, what, what do you mean it's empty? He said, there, there was uh, jewelry in it and money, and it's not there, it's just rusty rubbish. He said, well, why did you keep it here? He said, well, I was keeping it here because I don't trust anybody. He said, but did you ever take anything out of it? He said, no, 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 I was keeping, why are you asking all these questions? He said, no, I just wonder, you know, what, what's going on? He said, There's, someone has stolen this. He said, well, well, why don't you just put the box back in the, in the, in the earth like, like, you, like before? He said, what do you mean? He said, because before, all, all you do is go, hoo, 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 like that. You know, you can, you can do that uh, again. And the guy was like confused, you know. And then the thief just smiled and walked away. So <laughs> this is what happens if we don't use things that, we, that can be used in Krishna's service. Use it or lose it. So we should be very concerned about living a simple life. It doesn't matter. You can earn a million dollars a day. If you have that potency, there's nothing wrong with it. But before uh, the sun uh, sets, you should spend that part that you don't really need in the service of Krishna. And you start again the next day. Again, earn a million dollars. What's wrong with it? There are people that earn a million dollars every day in the United States. In fact, there are people that earn even more than that every day. But just keeping it. There, and an example is uh, uh, this one very uh, simple devotee, uh, what was his name? Sridhar. He, he had a first name and his next, second name is Sridhar. Anyway, in Mayapur, he was living on the bank of the Ganges and he would earn a living by sewing uh, leaves into little cups. Right. And it, what is it? Yeah, Kolavachar Sridhar, yeah. And he would also uh, grow a few vegetables. So he'd have one or two squashes and then he had some little uh, leaf cups and things like that. And Lord Chaitanya liked him very much. He was, and he would only make about, I don't know, one rupee a day, something like that, or half a rupee a day. And half of it he would spend on worshipping Ganga Devi. And the other half he would use for his personal needs. He was very poor. So Lord Chaitanya would come and talk to him and and uh, but he would always try and take something for free. 
or in other words, steal it. And this was a little game that he was playing. And uh, Kolovach uh, Shira said, why are you doing this? I'm a poor man, you know, and, and I need uh, a little bit of money to worship Ganga Devi. And <laughs> so in other words, they had this relationship. Uh, it's not that Lord Chaitanya stole every time he came, but he would sometimes take something. And the man with the, uh, and, and his devotee would uh, object a little bit. And it was a very sweet pastime, you see. Of course, everything belongs to Lord Chaitanya. He's the Supreme Personality of God. He's not stealing anything. But you see, here's an example that the Lord would go out of his way to meet him. Why? Because he was such a sincere devotee. And you know, you earn, let's say, one rupee and half of it you give for worshiping Ganga every day. So in other words, he's actually giving half of what he has uh, every day to the Lord. So this is, this will lead to what? It, here Prabhupada says, uh, Consequently, such materially puffed up persons are incapable of uttering the holy name of the Lord by addressing him feelingly, O Govinda, O Krishna. It is said in the Shastra, Shastras that by once uttering the holy name of the Lord, the sinner gets rid of a quantity of sins that he is unable to commit. Such is the power of uttering the holy name of the Lord. There is not the least exaggeration in the statement. Actually, the Lord's holy name has such powerful potency, but there is a quality to such utterances also. It depends on the quality of feeling. A helpless man can feelingly utter the holy name of the Lord, whereas a man who utters the same holy name in great material satisfaction cannot be so sincere. So we have the example of Draupadi. She's in a hopeless situation. She's got five husbands. They're all big guys. They're, 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 they're ripped, as they say in English. They have strong bodies, but they can't do anything. And she calls out to Krishna in her helpless condition, I mean, nobody's going to help her. Even Bhisma Dev is there and, and Dronacharya, all these big guys, nobody's there to help her. She completely depends on the mercy of Krishna and she begs with two hands. At one, at, at, in the beginning she was holding her sari with one hand and she let go also. And just with two hands, she's praying to the Lord sincerely. And what happens? The Lord actually reciprocates. Right? So that chanting the holy name with complete dependence on the Lord and with, with sincerity and feeling is something special that we should try and cultivate. And that you don't have to give up all your assets to do it, but you should use all your assets, your youth, your intelligence, your, your money, your house, your car. You should use all these things in the service of Krishna. And then one, uh, and then the, uh, the quality of the utterance becomes significant. It, it depends on the quality of feeling. A helpless man can feelingly utter the holy name of the Lord, whereas a man who utters the same holy name in great material satisfaction cannot be so sincere. A materially puffed up person may utter the holy name of the Lord occasionally, but he is incapable of uttering the name in quality. Therefore, the four principles of material advancement, namely high parentage, good wealth, high education, and attractive beauty are, so to speak, disqualifications for progress on the path of spiritual advancement. Haribo. So this Varnashram, Daiva Varnashram system is all about developing this quality of feeling for the Lord. And it's based on the ecstasy that one feels in chanting the holy name and engaging in devotional service and, and uh, appreciating the beauty of Radha and Krishna every day and so forth. So uh, th there's a difference between the traditional Varnashram and the Daiva Varnashram, although the purpose is the same. <clears throat> so uh, I'll stop right there. Are there any questions anyone would like to ask? Yes. Thank you.
Krishna Maharaj. So I was thinking that the traditional, you were using the word traditional Varnashrama. I, I thought that the actual the Varnashrama itself was created by the Lord, so the original itself was supposed to be Daivi, isn't it? Well, uh, Lord Chaitanya changed everything in a sense, right? He comes and he uh, opens up the treasure of love of God and distributes it to everyone freely without making any condition. Whereas Lord, Ch Lord Krishna made a condition when he came. He's, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Krishna are the same. But when he came, he said, Man manabhava mad bhakto. You know, and he said, Daivi hi esu guna mai mama mara direct. Mam eva ye prapadyante. You have to surrender unto me. Sarvadharmam prityacha. Surrender unto me. Lord Chaitanya didn't say surrender unto me. He, said, he just said, Chan Hare Krishna. So, but if you chant Hare Krishna in the association, not 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 necessarily by yourself, but in the association of of ecstatic devotees and devotees who have actual faith and are actually following Krishna consciousness, you will feel ecstasy. And we see that uh, often. So that's the difference. Whereas the Varnashram system, it's to allure people traditional one where you can get all your material benefits or desires satisfied and if you have if you're in the association of genuine Brahmin, Brahmin priests they'll also give you knowledge of what the real goal of life is and gradually you'll progress but it's a slow process whereas Lord Chaitanya Sankatan is, 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 you know can almost instantly help you to, to feel the ecstasy of uh, chanting Hare Krishna and worshiping the Lord and engaging all these spiritual activities. Mm. So, so that's why Prabhupada was able to spread the movement so quickly because he chanted Hare Krishna and distributed prasadam and also spoke uh, Bhagavad Gita. And devotees, although they were in, in deep in the modes of ignorance and passion they became purified very quickly there was a it's what's called, called the Hare Krishna explosion <laughs> so we should understand what is Daiva Varnasha any other questions Just as a continuation or relation to that, so can we say that uh, uh, the traditional Varnashrama system Maharaj is based on like karma yoga, doing your duties and then gradually progressing from karma to... Uh, yeah, it's a progressive, progressive uh, slow, progressive process. Whereas Devi Varnashrama is bhakti, taking up... Uh, Take it bhakti. up right away. Right, bhakti. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But you, it only works in the association of genuine devotees. It doesn't... It's, it's not... I mean, if you can have a you can have a person who's trying to teach you Hare Krishna, but if he himself is not happy, mm. or she herself is not happy, they can't really inspire you. Right. You have to be in an association of pure devotees for yes. the whole thing to work. <laughs> right. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So my question is like, is the traditional Varnashrama uh, based on Karma Kanda or like Karma Yoga? Like, well, it's it's it promises people uh, material uh, satisfaction in their material desires, as long as it's not sinful, right? Yeah. So people will be able to satisfy their material desires, and same time make gradual. Uh, spiritual advancement if they're in association of genuine brahmanas and devotees okay. right yeah. uh, but it's a slower process yeah. because so they, they have these strong desires that they want to satisfy so basically it helps them come from like karma kanda to doing karma yoga yes which is like serving yeah. krishna through their work yeah 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 thank you Mark. Hi, 
I read your uh, homework. It was very well done. Yeah. Yes. Uh, speaking about Varnasham Dharm, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was conversing with uh, Ramananda, Roy. Ramananda Roy and uh, how to satisfy, he could at verse, I can remember Sanskrit. Varnashram. Yeah, something. So that Varnashram, Ramananda Roy referred to, which, which kind of Varnashram that? Is that Devi Varnashram or? No, it's a traditional Varnashram system. Traditional Varnashram, okay. By the way, it's so strict, no one would be able to follow it today. Right, it's that's the point. Yeah. So it, it doesn't work at the present moment when Mahaprabhu came, that's why he introduced Devi Vanasham Dharma. Yeah. It's just like uh, something like Brahmanical system. In Kali Yuga it doesn't work. Only a Vaishnava is true Brahmin. Yeah. Also. Who say like that? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. There are no there are no bona fide Brahmanas in Kali Yuga, unfortunately. Only those are trained to be Vaishnavas. Well, I mean, you can see that. I mean, go, go to the other temples here. You'll see it. They're nice people, but they're, they're you know, the right now they're doing Navaratri, you know, and, and uh, worshiping Durga Mata like she's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm. And, then, and people are doing that piously, uh, but, you know, they're hoping that their business does better. They're hoping this thing, that thing, you know, and the whole thing is based on material benefit. Whereas mm. bhakti is, is, I mean, there could be in the beginning some material desires, but ultimately uh, one changes those material desires by dovetailing them into Krishna consciousness. Right. Yeah. I have an idea, Maharaj. If you could go in Bhagavatam, this is the first canto. That must one is to stamp him some. Yeah, Mr. Waxing. If you read that with proper purpose, we might get more cl more uh, light about about what about Varnasham Dharma. Because you speak specifically about Varnasham. That must one is to stamp him some. Mr. Waxing, Katastri. Yeah. Not part of the idea. Tim Shama Avery. Occupational activities. A man performs according to his own position are but only so much useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the message of the personality of Godhead. Yeah. So, there are different occupational activities in terms of man's different conceptions of life. To the gross materialist who cannot see anything beyond the gross material body, there is nothing beyond the senses. Therefore, his occupational activities are limited to concentrated and extended selfishness. Concentrated selfishness centers around the personal body. This is generally seen amongst the lower animals. Extended selfishness is manifested in human society and centers around the family, society, community, nation, and world with a view to gross bodily comfort. Above those gross materialists are the mental speculators who hover aloft in the mental spheres and their occupational duties involve making poetry and philosophy or propagating some ism with the same aim of selfishness limited to the body and the mind. Above the body and mind is the dormant spirit soul whose absence from the body makes the whole range of bodily and mental selfishness completely null and void. But less intelligent people have no information of the needs of the spirit soul because foolish people have no information of the soul and how it is beyond the purview of the body and mind, they are not satisfied in performance of their occupational duties. The question of the satisfaction of self is raised herein. The self is beyond the gross body and subtle mind. He is the potent active principle of the body and mind. Without knowing the need of the dormant soul, one cannot be happy simply with an emolument or decoration. Emolument means like decoration of the body and mind. The body and mind are but superfluous outer coverings of the spirit soul. The spirit soul's needs must be fulfilled. Simply by cleansing the cage of the bird, one does not satisfy the bird. One must actually know the needs of the bird himself. 
The need of the spirit soul is that he wants to get out of the limited sphere of material bondage and fulfill his desire for complete freedom. He wants to get out of the covered walls of the greater universe. He wants to see the free light and the spirit. That complete freedom is achieved when he meets the complete spirit, the personality of Godhead. There is a dormant affection for God within everyone. Spiritual existence is manifested through the gross body and mind in the form of perverted affection for gross and subtle matter. Therefore, we have to engage ourselves in occupational engagements that will evoke our divine consciousness. This is possible only by hearing and chanting the divine activities of the Supreme Lord and any occupational activity which does not help one to achieve attachment for hearing and chanting the transcendental message of Godhead is said herein to be simply a waste of time. This is because other occupational duties, whatever ism they may belong to, cannot give liberation to the soul. Even the activities of the salvationists are, centered, are considered to be useless because their failure to pick up the fountainhead of all liberties. Uh, the gross materialist can practically see that his material gain is limited only to time and space, either in this world or in the other. Even if he goes up to the Swarga Loga, he will find no permanent abode for his hankering soul. The hankering soul must be satisfied by the perfect scientific process of perfect devotional service. Hmm. So it's all about where you're going to get this ultimate happiness, and that is Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. And uh, it says, uh, thank you, Maharaj. But then what, what, what does uh, Prabhupada uh, Prabhupada says in the, this original verse from Bhagavad Gita, uh, Chatuvarnam Mayashistam. Yeah, Guna Karma Vibhaga. Yeah, could we look into that? See? Sure. 4.13. Mm -hmm. Four thirteen. Purport says, according to the three modes of material nature and the work associated with them, the four divisions of human society are created by me. And although I am the creator of this system, you should know that I am yet the non-doer, being unchangeable. The Lord is the creator of everything. Everything is born of Him. Everything is sustained by Him, and everything, after annihilation, rests in Him. He is therefore the creator of the four divisions of the social order, beginning with the intelligent class of men, technically called brahmanas, due to their being situated in the mode of goodness. Next is the administrative class, technically called kshatriyas, due to their being situated in the mode of passion. The mercantile men, called the vaishas, are situated in the mixed modes of passion and ignorance, and the sudras, or laborer class, are situated in the ignorant mode of material nature. In spite of his creating the four divisions of human society, Lord Krishna does not belong to any of these divisions because he is not one of the conditioned souls, a section of whom form human society. Human society is similar to any other animal society, but to elevate men from the animal status, the above-mentioned divisions are created by the Lord for the systematic development of Krishna consciousness. The tendency of a particular man toward work is determined by the modes of material nature which he has acquired. Such symptoms of life according to the different modes of material nature are described in the 18th chapter of this book. A person in Krishna consciousness, however, is above even the brahmanas, although brahmanas by quality are supposed to know about Brahman, the supreme absolute truth, most of them approach only the impersonal Brahman manifestation of Lord Krishna. But a man who transcends the limited knowledge of the Brahmana and reaches the knowledge of the Supreme Personality Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, becomes a person in Krishna consciousness, or in other words, a Vaishnava. Krishna consciousness includes knowledge of all different plenary expansions of Krishna, namely Rama, Nishingha, Varaha, etc. And as Krishna is transcendental to the system of the four divisions of human society, a person in Krishna consciousness is also transcendental to all the divisions of human society, whether we consider the divisions of community, nation, or species. So that's the point. Rising above the influence of the three modes. Nistraigunya bhavarjana, Krishna says. Rise above the Vedas. Come to the level of devotional service. 
which is transcendental to the modes. And that's where you begin to experience this uh, Anandamaya Biasat, this transcendental nature of the soul, this freedom that you get by not being forced by Maya to seek sense gratification that is selfish and self-centered. But you offer all your talents to, to pleasing Krishna and the inspiration for that is regularly hearing and chanting the holy names of the Lord and his transcendental pastimes. So basically, David, David Vanasham Dharma means to engage your propensity, whatever nature you have acquired, in service of Krishna. Yes. Like Arjuna did. Yes. It was Kshatriya, but he fought for Krishna. Yes. Yes. That we can call that David Vanasham, right? Yeah, God centered. Mm. Spiritual Vanasham. Because we can see even among the Vaishnavas, they have different tendencies. Some they, they have a mood of... Uh, but if you dovetail it into Krishna consciousness, right. then you become ecstatic. So that's the way we can say that, what was the fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita? Karma Yoga? Action in Krishna consciousness. Yes. That's one. Yeah. Haribo. Okay. We'll stop there. Thank you very much. Operation Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.